Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. My name is Adam Glenn. Over there is Dax Holt. How are you, sir? I'm doing so good. I'm, uh, I'm here in sunny but soon to be very rainy California. You are in Miami. I've been watching your, uh, your Instagram. You are just all over the place. I'm excited to talk to you today because I feel like you're seeing <laughs> yeah. a lot of big stars. You, you're kind of just nonstop. So uh, I want to I want to pick your brain a little bit about your Miami adventures today, but uh, other than that, all's good, man. Yeah, we haven't got to catch up, so I want to actually talk to you about you just got back doing some stuff with Rob Gronkowski for the big bowl game, which is pretty cool. I know uh, that's one of the exciting things for you over the guys for you and your company, Trophy Smack, over the years. So we will get into that. I am like Miami. It's been raining here a lot lately, dude. And uh, just like I guess you guys are expecting it over where you guys are, but uh, it the weather's good. I mean, I don't know um, New York. Obviously, the winters are they're tough, and I hate mm -hmm. being around Rockefeller Center this type of year. So I want to get like that break because traffic is just a nightmare. People going to see the Christmas tree. So for me, I like to come back when the tree, the Christmas tree is down, so everything kind of calms down for a little bit. And then I'm kind of running around for like the next few weeks until Super Bowl. I don't really have any other big trips planned um, until, yeah, I guess until Super Bowl after my Miami yeah. thing. Because I'll be here for – I'm here for pretty much about a month. I was at home for a few days before that. I was in L.A. So a lot going on. Uh, before you know we what's get crazy? into – what, what's I want that? To tell you what's crazy. It's uh, – we're recording this – What it's the 18th today. We're recording this. It's 70 degrees out right now. I'm like December 18th, 70 degrees. How, why would anyone not want to live here? I don't understand. It is <laughs> so beautiful. And I'm walking around in shorts and a tank top and I look around and like half the country has snow and people look miserable. And I am like, I live in the best state. Please don't move out here, but I live in the best <laughs> state. <laughs> it's awesome. Listen, Dax, I get it. The old, when I was younger, I'd be like, why would people want to move to Florida? Why would – and now I get older, I'm like, oh, that's why, you know? Yep. Um, so I get it. I totally, totally get it. I – if I didn't do what I do, I don't know if I would stay in the area I'm at. You know, I, New York is a great place to be, but I did it, you know? And it sounds crazy. It's like I, I – I did everything I could do there. There's not much more. That I, I honestly, it'd be great. You have enough money, where you're able to kind of have an apartment that you know, in the perfect world, you have an apartment there that you get to go back and have a place called home. So you still feel like you have that grind in you. But I also like getting out. I also like palm trees. I also like going to the beach. I kind of like that more than taking a subway while guys masturbating on it. You know, uh, <laughs> it's it's just some of the things I like. Uh, but before we kind of catch up, uh, we love reviews. We love them so much that we actually read them on air. It's the best thing to do to support this podcast. Dax, do you have one ready? All right. This one, I'm clicking on it. Here we go. comes from DYD HUD HTD. Five stars. Keep it up. Thanks for all your dedication and hard work. Much appreciated. Well, thank you, DYD HUD. HTD. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care uh, if you're no, a bot or for some real. That was a nice review. It is, it is it was, hard work. It's so. a lot of work, dude. Sometimes it's like, a lot of work. I don't think I don't think people realize how much time we actually have to put into this podcast, and we actually have a lot of fun doing it. But there's a lot of times where both of us have so many things going on in our life, and we're like, okay, the people are going to expect a podcast. We have to be consistent because I think that's the number one thing with podcasting is. If you're not consistent, people will stop tuning into you. And we have, no. we have treated that as our motto since day one. Like there has to be an episode released 1 a.m. Wednesday morning, 1 a.m. Friday morning. Like people expect it. And I get like really upset emails or messages on social media. Someone's like, I didn't get my raw rundown on Friday. Like where the hell is it? And so, you know, we value 
every time you guys download our podcast, you listen to us, you, uh, it goes a long way. So that's why we are so consistent because of you guys. So thank you. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> it's, well, you know, there's been times where me and Dax are like, ah, do people worth it? And we, we just kind of get the, we're like, oh, you guys, we're with each other. We're a team here, all of us together. So we appreciate the feedback and the responses you guys give us. And we try to make the best show possible. And, uh, yeah, it's just Jackson and we and I fail every time, but still, <laughs> we will never give up. We will never give up. But again, keep the reviews coming in. Um, but like I said, guys, I'm in Miami right now. I tried. I've been doing this ever since COVID. I guess I've been coming down here. Uh, the beginning of COVID, come down here for a little bit of an extended period of time during the winter, and it's been so beneficial for me mentally, not just physically, just to kind of clear my head and kind of rewire myself. Uh, it's fun to kind of work out here a little bit. But it's also harder to work out here. And if you guys are new to the show, you guys know I am a I am a street journalist. I run around with my camera trying to interview celebrities. I work with paparazzi. If you call me a paparazzi, I'm not offended. I myself as a street journalist. However, this past week I did kind of work as a paparazzi, and I'll tell you because I I've been working Art Basel, and um, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, Dex. Throughout my more than a decade experience as being a journalist, I there's like some events I tell people you need to check out once in your life. You got to do it. Like for Super Bowl, I do think going out for Super Bowl week is once like you got to be out. You got to come out for the Super Bowl. It's not just the Sorry, game. When you the- when you yeah when you say come out for Super Bowl, do you mean fly to the city that Super Bowl is in so you can see stars and celebrities leaving parties, or are you like? you need to also go to see the big game. I have actually never been to the game. In fact, I actually leave before the game. Last year, uh, what was it last year? Yeah, you left before I guess, the no, game. No, not, not last year. Last year, someone asked me if I wanted to go to the game. I kind of turned it down. Um, people were like, mm-hmm. how can you turn down the Super Bowl? But it, it, I'm so exhausted by the end of the week that it's such a – like come Monday, it's like you just want to get out of town. I'm like scared to like, kind of catch a flight. I usually – get there around Tuesday and leave first thing Sunday morning. In fact, usually Saturday night. Sometimes I – like when I was in L.A., I didn't even get a hotel. I pulled an all-nighter and uh, I just slept in my car because I usually got like a 6.30 a.m. flight back home so I could be home in time to watch the game. Um, so wait, but the are you going was, to Vegas? I'm going to Vegas. I'll be in Vegas for the okay. Super Bowl. Okay. And I don't have a hotel estate. By the way, hotels for the Super Bowl week are so – Usually I don't have an issue. You know, Arizona, it wasn't bad. L.A. wasn't bad because so many places. Vegas, dude, the prices for a hotel are out of control right now. Dex, I tried booking. This is so sad, but this is, guys, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not making a ton of money here. <laughs> I tried booking a room. I'm so embarrassed to say this, but I'll say it. I tried booking a room at Circus Circus. <laughs> Circus Circus. <laughs> Dude, a room at Circus Circus was costing me like close to three fifty four. I'm like, are you kidding me for Super Bowl week? Mm-hmm. Like, I just need a place to crash and shower. I'm not like hanging out there. Like, just give me Wi Fi and like a, a an okay clean looking bed. It's not like I'm trying to bring in people back to my place. Like, I just need a place like in a good sort of location that's kind of close to everything. But the prices for hotels, like. I don't know if I can even make money this trip, but I have to go out there. And the reason why I tell people they, they should check out the Super Bowl experience is because if you're Hollywood obsessed, if you're celebrity obsessed, if you're just a fan and just want to have a fun week, you'll kind of know where everything's going on. And you could kind of like just walk around and you just stumble upon football players, uh, athletes from all different sports, celebrities. And it's just like a fun week. If you're like me, you kind of get bullshit your way into some of these d-list parties and it's fun to kind of hang out with these people in a um non-traditional place for myself you know um yeah. it's like like the bella twins i get to hang out i'm sorry the garcia sisters i get to like hang out with them at a party it's cool to like hang out with these people who i've kind of have hunted down for the past couple of years and like hang out with them at a party at a bar and just like get to know each other and just enjoy the experience i mean last year i remember i was at a party and jonathan chabin walked in the party stunk it was rolling stones and Travis Scott was before, and Jonathan Chabin walked in, and I actually like Jonathan Chabin, food god. He's a good guy, and I was like, "Yo, dude, get out of here! Like, you shouldn't be here. This party sucks." He's like, really? I was like, "Yeah, like, don't even have a drink. Just 
beat traffic, get out here and go, no, he's all right, cool. And like, it's fun to have like those part, like those real things, like, cause we're yeah. all in it together. We're all just trying to go find like the coolest and most fun party. And uh, you're just jumping from party to party. And some, I'm not like a, trust me, I don't get on every single guest list by any means. I'm usually the guy outside, but that's what I'm like trying to find the most happening party and get some interviews. So that's good for me. But right now I'm in Miami for, I was just at Art Basel. And you've heard a lot about Art Basel over the years, Dex, right? Oops. Dude, I have covered so much of Art Basel from, like, back uh, in the TMZ days, obviously. It, that's where, this time of year, Art Basel was popping. All the big celebs were going down there. You would see them hitting up the galleries. Then you would see them going to the nightclubs. You'd see them going to the restaurants. It is just one of those events that brings big, big names into town. And... Um, and so Art Basel was 100% in my vocabulary for the last few years, for sure. If you thought about going to Art Basel and you have no interest in art, buying art, selling art, you have no business in the art industry, I wouldn't suggest come to Art Basel. It's an overhyped weekend for really not much. I mean, as far as celebrities goes, yeah, there was a lot of celebrities here. There was you know, the Leonardo DiCaprio's, the Serena Williams and stuff. But it's just but do, not do, really... do you feel like it's calmed down? Like, I feel like 10 years ago, Art Basel used to be the biggest thing in December. I feel so that's like what over everyone, the years, that's what it has said, calmed yeah. down. That's what everyone said. Like, it's not as good as it used to be. It's gotten more commercial. It's become more of a scene. And I get that. And I could see that to a certain extent. I mean, you know, there's not... there. There's, there's things going on. Most of the bigger parties, like Jeff Bezos was down here and... You know, you have like some huge billionaires down there, but they usually go to private parties and you'll find out a little bit about the private parties. There was this one guy and he's, I don't, he, I don't think he's a billionaire. He's just like some very high profile dude. He had this party. He has Snoop Dogg performing. He had Lil Wayne performing. There was tons of celebrities there from Tom Brady, Leonardo DiCaprio. In fact, I went outside the party because it was late at night. It was like one thirty in the morning, but it was like raining too. And as I was there, all of a sudden Snoop Dogg came out. Um, I saw Simon Rex. Talked to Simon Rex, good okay. guy. Um, Did you uh, say he got us podcast. one of the? You say he he got us one of the biggest, most trafficked web uh, interviews ever. I did. I did. Good guy. I love Simon Rex. I did see Serena Williams, which Serena and her husband they got into a cyber truck. Have you seen a cyber truck yet? Yes, like the new Tesla cyber truck. They so they. Somehow there's only a very, very few of them dri driven around. You, I think you, the way you have to get them now, you have to like be sort of – you have to know someone. And obviously her husband's a very – he's a very, very successful business guy. In fact, actually might have to look it up who her husband is, um, Serena Williams. But Serena Williams was coming out of the party and the husband ran out first. And I was like, I think that's Serena Williams' husband. And he got into the cyber truck. He got the keys. I was like talking to the guys, like, dude, how do you like this truck? And he's like, oh, it's cool. It's good. I was like, man, there's I was no way that they had keys for that car. I know. Well, he, I was, he's jiggling around. I was like, oh, which key is this? No. He, yeah. I, in fact, I was just, is it a car? car like a, is it a car like the normal Tesla? <sighs> good question. I don't really know what it was, but he went, it was a little, it was light raining out. It was a light rain. So he went and picked up the car and drove it just right in front of like the door where she's coming out. And Serena just walked out by herself, no security, no bodyguards or nothing. And the guy, the husband, got out of the car, opened the door for her, and she just walked, got into a cyber truck and drove away. But it was the first time I saw a cyber truck on the streets. Um, and uh, Can just we to watch see that, that video real fast. Okay, I, yeah, I yeah, watch sure. I didn't even see it coming out. How do you like it though? Is it cool? It's, it's very nice. Yeah. Meek. Meek. Uh, hey, Serena, have a good night, alright? Can I get a bitch in Serena? <laughs> have a good holiday. Love that car, that's sick, dude. Have a great holiday, sir.
That's dope, dude. That car looks so Pretty sick. Pretty cool, right? It's crazy. I mean, it looks sick, but I feel like I would feel like a douchebag driving it around, even though I love my car, I love my Tesla. That one looks so futuristic. It looks weird, but you have to see I the mean, inside. If, yeah, you have to. You have to like if, really. The truck is incredible. In fact, the only reason I saw it because a week prior I was at the car museum in LA and they had a cyber truck, and I was able to kind of um, like kind of really look at it and kind of check it out. Um, but by the way, if you guys are listening, it's amazing. If, if you guys are listening to this, you need to go to our YouTube page to watch this clip. Just you can fast forward through us talking, but get to this clip. Uh, so you could actually see the car, the the, the truck itself, because it's it is ridiculous. Yeah, Serena Williams' husband. He's only a year older than me. The guy is he's forty years old, so I'm thirty nine. But uh, he uh, he's got uh, he's he's the guy's a big uh, entrepreneur investor. In fact, he is the uh, he well, he's the co-founder and former executive chairman of the social media site Reddit. Um, so that's pretty crazy. The guy helped create Reddit. Um, his net worth, they say, is about seventy million dollars. But obviously, he knows a lot of people, um, and What's somehow he knows a lot around? of people. <sighs> Serena Williams, that's a great question. In fact, I but think she might be most... on like Forbes or something. Well, the uh, thing is, I think uh, she made her net worth is two hundred sixty million. Are you getting that off a reputable website? Forbes. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure never, because no. I feel there, there's so many of those websites that's like celebrity net worth where it's just like such bullshit. I, I think it has my net worth at $200 million. I'm like, clearly that ain't the case. You're, so, whoa, um, mine is mine is one to $5 million. I'm like, guys, no, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, it's not, but I wish that'd be so nice. Um, anyway, so, uh, I was outside this party. I f- saw a few other celebrities talk to Tiesto. Um, who else did I get? Actually one night, uh, and I did this story. It's on our private Facebook group called off the record. Um, there's this other photographer out here who I became friends with. His name's pitchy picks. And he's a really, really popular uh, photographer here in Miami. He shoots all the celebrities. He's probably like the number one guy here in Miami. We became friends and we went to Carbone one night. We see the security guy outside Carbone. And we're waiting outside, and it's, the car is right in front of the entrance. And they're like, okay, this has got to be Bezos. And someone comes out and says, hey, Bezos walked in before. We're like, okay, it's Bezos' car. He's going to walk out. That's a good shot for me. We're waiting outside. Security guard comes up to us and goes, hey, um, you guys obviously know who we're waiting for. I'm like, yeah, sure. He goes, just don't crowd him. And he's just going to walk to the car. We're like, yeah, no problem. It's just the two of us. I'm like, cool. Like, obviously, we're being professional. I even say to the guy, hey, thanks for giving us a heads up. You know, like, we'll let you go. Like, we're just going to shoot it, and that's it. What do they do? They sneak him out the back. After all that, they sneak him out the back. So I'm like, screw you, dude. Like, you should have just gave us a heads. Like, just give us a heads up. Don't play games. Don't try to squeeze him out the – So actually, it was funny. As I'm there, someone comes out from the restaurant and says, yeah, Bezos was here. He went out the back. Weird part about him is that he ordered bottle by the glass. He ordered wine by the glass, which – that sounds normal for us, but here's a guy who could afford the whole restaurant. He could afford the whole block. He could afford a bottle, but he was like, yeah, I'll just have gla- like a glass of wine. So we thought that was – to me, that, that's a new story. And then someone else came from the restaurant and said to me that, hey, Bezos just came to my family restaurant in Chicago, tipped 20% on the dot. Also, his security came to the kitchen before he sat down and said, listen, who's the one who's, who's going to be making the food? Okay, you're in charge of making the appetizer, the dinner, and the dessert. Only you. That's your main responsibility. And because they only wanted one person to be hand, be responsible for handling the food, which I thought was interesting. But I got the story in page six. I, I, that, that, was, that to me is more interesting than the bottle of wine or the buying a, a glass of wine because how can you walk into someone else's establishment and just go, okay, we want one person focused on this dude's meal? Yeah, it was uh, – Especially when you're only paying tipping twenty percent, it's not like you paid more. So I think that's it's very unique for a guy like that coming to the restaurant. I guess they want to know who's going to be responsible for making the food, and rather have less people involved than others. I don't know. Pretty, I, pretty. Unique. I always, I always find this interesting. The pressure that celebrities have on them for being a celebrity, but the second that bill comes out, 
and how people expect you to either number one, pay the bill. Like if you're there with friends, people expect you to pick up the bill because it's common knowledge that you have more money. But then on top of it, the wait staff is going to expect a good tip as well. I just think there's a lot of anticipation. I think that there's a lot of pressure put on celebrities and rich people on are they going to pull through and tip well or spend more money than they should uh, just because of who they are? Oh, dude, I've asked that to celebrities before. You know, is there pressure? Do you have anxiety? I mean, just because, I mean, you're no different than anybody else. Do you have to tip 25%? You know, like, wh- what do you do to make sure you just don't come across bad? I've had, I've been out with some big celebrities too, where they're like, hey, listen, can I pay you the money you put on your credit card? Because I don't want to have to feel the pressure of like, if you tip, in which you tip 20%, that's fine. But then if I don't tip a certain amount, people think I'm a dick. Yep. It's weird. I'm not. Anyway. Right. That's, that seems like a smart way to do it. Like have your non-famous, non-rich friend pick up the bill and then just Venmo them the cash and be like, here you go. That way it's not my name on the credit card. So this is when it gets crazy. I, you know, uh, the next night after kind of working it, Kanye West is in town. Obviously, he's a pretty big news story. It's the first time people have really seen Kanye in a long time. He's in with his girlfriend or his wife uh, now. Um, and Peachy, the photographer I work with, who is a friend of mine, says, hey, listen, he's staying at this hotel. And I'm like, yeah, it's insane. The thing about Kanye is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't know if it was going to be really worth it. I still probably don't think it was worth it. I don't know. I think I sold anything or licensed anything from it. But Kanye is supposed to do – announce his – the day after Carbone, I kind of want to stay home and just kind of enjoy Miami. But, of course, that was the day Kanye was kind of rolling around and moving around and enjoying Miami. The next day, Kanye didn't come out at all. But he announces he's doing a private show at this random spot in Widwood, Miami, Widwood Garden. And the tickets – well, first of all, the show didn't start till midnight. So it was going starting at Monday at 12 a.m., you know, Sunday night, midnight. And tickets were six hundred, like two hundred dollars to six hundred dollars VIP. I'm like, dude, who's nuts to pay these ticket prices? Anyway, we find out the oh, hotel. Wait, wait. That you said of, it was, you said it was a secret show. So why it was a secret show? Because like- it was they dropped it like last second, within like six hours. They announced, hey, Connie's going to do this show. So is but it a secret? No, I would say six hundred dollars. So it's not. I, I, sh- I say a secret show. It's more like a pop up show. Like within six hours, like, hey, I'm doing a concert tonight. So it was okay. it secret? Yeah, but like it wasn't really uh, largely advertised. If you follow Kanye, you knew, you knew. And the show is at midnight. I find that the hotel Kanye is at. And I was trying to avoid it, but Peachy goes, listen, I think you should come by. It's 1030 at night. I go there. It's cold. And we go there from 12, from 1030 at night. We're hanging outside the hotel. Me, a bunch of photographers, about six photographers and six fans. And we're waiting outside. And the security is being not bad to us but they're like hey you guys can't be on the property and the door for the hotel was kind of about i don't know about 250 feet away from us so you had to get up to kanye so every time you kind of took a step on the sidewalk the security of the hotel is like hey guys get on the sidewalk take a step on the side- hey guys get on the sidewalk finally we're waiting around 10 30 and 8 it's around 1 30 in the morning and like people are starting to come out of the hotel but you're talking about like not just people like this is a, a very nice, very expensive $1,000, $1,500 a night hotel in Miami. Kanye must have had, I don't know, 80 people, friends of his, staying with him at the hotel, like just hanging out in the mm. hotel with them. And this is at 1.30 in the morning, dude. Like these people are like kind of causing ruckus in the lobby. When I mean ruckus, not doing anything bad, but like loud, a lot of heads. Like it's just a lot of people. And we're like, dude, when's Wait, here's Kanye a question come out? for you. Is this the same group of people that we saw the video of him inside the hotel, like going after Trump, going after Jews, going out, like saying all that crazy shit? Was this those people inside of that room before they left there to go out? These were the people on. No, because that the one you're talking about, that was night in Vegas. This night was Mm, before he was doing the show in Miami. So this was like rappers like I, I don't even know half of these rappers, Chris Brown. Think uh, um, one of the uh, a lot of rappers. I, I can't even remember what names were there, and everyone. And then the the guys who weren't the rappers looked like gay vampires. It was just such a <laughs> weird scene. 
I'm telling you, dude, they're all wearing like black. They're all trying to dress like Kanye. And uh, finally, Kanye comes out. And it's the funniest thing because there's like six bo- security guys on the sidewalk, on the driveway, trying to keep us off their property. Kanye walks out of the property, like comes out the door. We all, and me included, I'm not perfect. I'm a, I'm a dick. I, we all run towards the front gate. You know, we all run on the property to get up to Kanye. We're like, Kanye, they're trying to stop us. It was like a flag football game. We're running around the guys. Dude, it's complete chaos. And we're running around them. I get right up to Kanye. I'm like, Kanye. And I try to talk to him. He's not really talking to me, but he's with the kids, which is crazy. That I'm with his kids. He's with um, Blue. And it's 1.30, 1.45 in the morning. I'm like, what? The, the thing I'm thinking about the whole time is like, what's your kid doing out this late? Finally, right? Kanye goes into uh, the um, Kanye goes into the Sprinter, and it was funny just because all of us got like right up to Kanye after trying to keep us off the property. We get to Kanye, I'm like, ah, I waited to two in the morning just for that. It really didn't get much from him, but I got like the shot of Kanye, some B-roll of Kanye that I thought could maybe do something. I go back to my car. And I know where they're going. They're going to this concert and this show that he's doing at Winwood Gardens. It's like one – now it's like quarter to two in the morning. I didn't even feel like going to it. I was like, I'm not going to go for it. It's just too late for me. It just seems like so much work and not worth the effort. As I'm sitting in my car trying to put in my directions to go back to my place, all of a sudden I see the brigade of Kanye Sprinter and about eight Escalades traveling in front of me. Not only that, I see about four paparazzi cars following I'm like, screw it. I have to do it. I have to chase too. I just got caught up in the moment. And I've, listen, I usually don't do this. I don't chase celebrities, but this one, you know, I knew where they were going. I was like, fuck, I'm going to follow too. It was a high speed follow. Cause I don't want to say chase because we all knew where they were going. It was a high speed follow of about 12 cars going to this place, going to this Windwood Gardens. I mean, Kanye Sprinter was going through red lights and flying there. And not only that, the sprinters behind are all these rappers like Chris Brown, uh, Offset. Uh, I mean, just a crazy chase. Going th- Honestly, it felt like Fast and Furious going through Miami, these like little roads. And again, going through red lights. Was it the safest thing? Absolutely not. I just got caught up in it. I kind of want to see what it was like, you know, like how it worked in Miami. Finally, mm-hmm. we get to the venue. And it's so unorganized, dude. And there's no place for like the sprinter to pull in. It's just kind of like a venue. It's not like, so Kanye had to walk in. I get, as Kanye comes out of the sprinter, I didn't really see him with this, the, the black KKK mask, but I got like right next to Kanye. And somehow I kind of get roped into like walking with Kanye where they just let me into the concert, dude. No one stopped me. I walked with Kanye to the stage. It was like, I tried talking to him. He wasn't talking to me. I regret not asking him anything about, you know, some of the stuff that was going on with him, but he just wasn't talking to me. I was trying to get him to open up, but I should have just asked the questions and put him on spot and asked him some blunt questions. What I should have also done is got in front of him a little bit more because I usually like to walk to the side, but in the front was his wife walking with, uh, I guess, Blue in her arms or one of his kids in his arms. But I got right up to the stage with Kanye. I stayed for about a song because I was like, dude, it's 2.30 in the morning. I just want to go home. I didn't even stay for the whole concert. I left. Now, Kanye, as we know, has been doing some really shitty things lately. Um, with all the shitty things going on, I did watch the highlights of the concert. And I will say, it wasn't even a concert. He was lip syncing. It was just weird. Like He was on stage kind of lip syncing to his music and playing mm-hmm. some of his new songs. The new songs did sound great. But he himself has done some terrible, terrible things lately. And it's just like, I can't condone like it doesn't. What did you think well. about? Um, what did you think about his daughter, uh, Northwest, performing? I mean, honestly, performing. I didn't think anything of it the whole time. I'm like, she should be home. She should be home. <laughs> she should be sleeping. I mean, I can't. I don't think I was ever that age and awake at that time at, at night. So let's <laughs> you know? see. It was. It, what did? What time did you say it was? It was she probably two thirty in the morning. Okay, so it was technically eleven. Her time, because she lives in California, right? Okay. Still really late, but nonetheless, you know, he should have had her home. But it, it was, she probably wasn't even like that tired because it still felt like she was on California time. I guess, but that's, I just kept thinking about that stuff. But, um, and so did you, did you, you didn't see him at any moment in his weird KKK 
style I, hoodie I, that he I had on. With, honestly, I saw him with a hood on, but it didn't really make like in my head. There, in my head, maybe I was just sort of like, "There's no way Kanye is wearing a black KKK mask." Like you know, like there's yeah. just no way he's that stupid or arrogant to do something like that. I mean, if, if and there's so much like um, emotion and it, adrenaline going through my body. That there's like mm-hmm. Kanye, Kanye would never do that. Like, how stupid could you be to do something like that? Well, he pretty stupid. He did it. So, um, <laughs> and you're like anti Kanye now, huh? I just I'm so I, I. It's like every day there's a new story, a new thing. I think it was this latest rant in Vegas that I'm just like, why are people even giving him the time of day? Why are people listening to him? Why is why is there 30 people packed inside of a hotel room? listening to him rant and just say nonsensical, dumb crap. Like, well, that's enough the thing is-, is enough. Get this guy help. He needs mental help. He is out of his mind. He is just going to keep hurting people around him. It, he offends everyone he talks about. Like, stop already. Like, go that's- away. Get yourself healthy, bro. That's the part I don't realize. Like, if you... um are some of these people that if you're one of these guys that is on stage with him and he, you know, is wearing this, this stuff, Chris Brown, one of these guys right in that room at the party in Vegas, does anybody speak up? Does anybody say, Hey man, let's walk out. Does anybody say, you know, like at what point does someone say, Hey, this is sort of uh... I'm going to assume people did. And that's why they're not around him anymore. Anyone who wanted to stop him and, correct his behavior was probably cast to the side that's why like i heard him kind of ragging on jay-z you know obviously kim and her whole family is out of the picture because he's so wild he doesn't want to listen to anyone and anyone that probably has his best interest in mind is going to be like nope i don't want to listen to you because you're not doing what i'm saying and so now you've just got a bunch like yes men surrounding him that say Okay, whatever whatever Kanye wants, I'm gonna bend over backwards to make sure it happens. But like, who's the person gonna be like, Kanye, you're going too far? Like, yeah, stop. Yeah. Just stop because you may think what you're saying is is good and accurate and you but like you're not mentally all there. You need to stop talking before you really do completely kill off everything that you've ever accomplished in your life by being a dumbass. Yeah, it's uh um that and honestly if you see the people with them they're they're definitely yes people they're people that want to be like Kanye they want to live that life and it's funny i was talking to another photographer there and they said every time you see Kanye there's different people around them mhm so yeah. i mean it says a lot that's because um, that's, no one he can't keep anyone around him because everyone's like you are a loose cannon dude you're not yeah. stable you're a loose cannon who who can you surround yourself with when you're not stable at all um, yeah, crazy. What's going on with you? You were just at SoFi. You did your – tell us – You know, some people don't know. You have this trophy company. Tell people – fill people in what's going on with you and Rob Gronkowski and how you guys kind of came about working together. Yeah, so um, Trophy Smack is my, um, my company. We've, uh, my buddy Matt and I started this up years ago. I think it's like five years now out of like literally our garages um, right after I left TMZ. I had plenty of time on my hands and – it's obviously gotten really popular really big quickly because fantasy football is so popular here in the U S and we make trophies and championship belts and rings and all kinds of crazy stuff. And, um, because of the success, we actually TMZ had invited me on a few years back to talk about going on shark tank. And during that taping, one of the guys who works at SoFi stadium, which is the most unbelievable stadium, like on the planet, so gorgeous had reached out and said, hey, I just saw you on TMZ Live. Uh, We're looking to start up this LA Bowl, and we want to do a big championship belt. That's literally how it all worked out. And now we have been doing the LA Bowl for the last three years. This is our third year in a row. The last two years were Jimmy Kimmel hosting. This time it was Rob Gronkowski, former Patriots, former Bucks player, like Tom Brady's basically right-hand man crazy, wild dude. Um, He was hosting it this year. And it was really fun, man. It's unlike any other bowl game out there. Like if people are into college football, like this is the game you'd want to go to. 
It was a UCLA versus Boise State. And they just make it a really fun time. You know, there's a lot of games going on. Rob's dancing. Rob's racing the, the, the Boise State dog. I mean, there, there's just so much happening. Um, got to, I got to take basically my whole crew here at the office. We all showed up. We had big turnover, like champ chains on with the different schools. We had belts. We had like all kinds of stuff when we entered into the, uh, the arena and we were handing out champ chains to, to different people. It was really a good time. And they give us a, a big suite there so we can be up there looking over the entire game and having a good time. And then I got to go down and hang out with Rob at the end of the game because they, they pull out this big uh, stage and the stage has our belts on it. It has trophy smack all up behind like on a kind of like a step and repeat and then you know the infinity screen at sofi like that's kind of what it's known for that big circular screen that goes around the inside yeah it had our trophy smack logos on it it was that's like that's... such a pinch me moment when you're looking up and you're like dude this was literally in my garage <laughs> five years ago and we are yeah. in the most incredible stadium like on the planet and they're broadcasting my company's logo up there for everyone to see like it's just it's just crazy to see how far we've come and then and then went over and took some photos with rob and he's just like oh i love the belt so much um he's a huge dude i don't know if you saw the picture yeah he's a statue he is is so big like wait was was camille there she was but she was too far away from me oh dude i I know she's a big fan yeah I know she's a big fan of your like your your Instagram and your social, so yeah, yeah. I wanted to talk to her. But like the where we were, so we were on the field, and there was camera crews around, and she was kind of like on the other side where I couldn't get to, but I could see her standing there. Um, but I, I wasn't able to make it over to her to like say hi and tell her that uh, uh, you're my podcast co-host and she loves your videos and stuff. But Rob <laughs> is Rob week, yeah. Rob is massive. He is like a good foot and a half two feet taller than me so our photo looks absolutely ridiculous because i look like a a tiny tiny little person next to him yeah you do look really tiny but he's a super he's like a nice fun guy he's cool he gets it uh i know last year they did the jimmy kimball bowl this year was a rob gronkowski bowl next year i think they should do like the guy fieri bowl Mm -hmm. i think that'd be well i think (laughs) i think i think rob was like such a good addition i wouldn't be surprised if they invite him back again to do it again because yeah he really made it fun. You know, obviously, he's won the Super Bowl numerous times, so he's uh, well decorated. You know, huge athlete. People were going crazy for him at the, the game. He was just so into it. Like anything they'd throw at him, he was down to do. And I think that's kind of the best thing you can do when you're a, a host of something like this. Is like, sure. let's do trivia. Okay, let's have a dancing contest. Okay, let's have. You know, it's <laughs> like he he did whatever they wanted. And yeah, yeah. so it made for a really fun game to be at. Uh, you know who else might have been there? And I think I saw, oh. based on their social media, I don't know if they're definitely there, but that night they posted something that they were at the stadium was Logan Paul. No. Dude, I swear I he posted something that he was there. I could be wrong, but it's funny because that night I said to my buddies, like, I, for, for some reason I thought that stadium was so far. It was in South Florida. And I was like, oh. Logan's in Miami, but then it turns out he was at the game. So, yeah. Are you serious? He was there? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I could be wrong, but I think he posted something. And he tagged That so would have been crazy. I, I, didn't see, I didn't see them flash him up on camera. I feel like people know me well enough. Like, I've got a lot of friends that work at SoFi. I'm surprised none of them would say, oh, by the way, Logan's here. Like, nothing. There was no mention. No one saw. Uh, I'm really surprised to hear that. No, that's cool. Well, listen, I enjoy catching up with you because we haven't been able to catch up. Um, we got some good episodes coming up to wrap up the year 2023. Thank you guys for hanging out with us a little bit. Follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We are on it all. We have a private Facebook group called Off the Record, which you guys should be on. Follow me at Adam Glenn. Follow Dax Holt at Dax Holt. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.